Were you involved at all with uh, Harry O? Me and Harry O brother was tight. I knew Harry. Okay. Yeah. And we were sellies when I was in jail. Okay, you guys were locked up together. Mm-hmm. Did you ever try to, to go into music? Because, you know, Harry O, allegedly. You, I was there when him and Suge met. So you were there when Harry O and Suge first met? Yeah. Really? Yeah. I was in the room with him and David Kenner. I was in the room with Harry when he told David Kenner that he's going to show him how to make more money in the music business than he ever made as a lawyer. They tried to get me to hire David Kenner. Really? Yeah, you know, that was their game. They hired, you hire David Kenner, and then they get a kickback. Who is they? <laughs> Harry O and a couple other guys in there that was running for David Kenner. Okay. So you, you were there when Death Row was essentially founded? Yeah. Okay. Sitting at the table. Why were you at the table? Long story. We had to do another interview about another interview. all that. Okay. So, so you were actually there when, when Suge Knight, Harry O, Made their made their initial team. met met. I know how they met. I know the whole thing. Okay. I'm, Harry O was doing an album on Lydia, his wife. Right. So me and him sell these. I tell him. I say, look, you doing a a a a album on Lydia. You better use Dr. Dre on that album. You know him and Easy fell out. So he ain't working right now. <laughs> okay. So Harry took that advice and started looking for Dr. Dre. And Suge Knight? And Suge Knight was his manager. Was Dr. Dre's manager at the yeah, time? Yeah, we'll leave it right there. Okay. And maybe later on we'll do another interview and talk about it. Okay, and the rest is history. Did you ever deal with Easy? I spoke to Easy uh, one time uh, when I was on the street, and I spoke to him one time through Harry O while okay. we were in jail. Okay. Did you try to get involved in the music industry at all? I did. I I, uh, I paid for Anita Baker's first album. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Okay. I found the Alcoholics. Really? Yeah. I'm a big fan. Matter of fact, I used to work for SRC Records. When I left they used Harry to be Loud o, Records. When I left Harry O, they came out with that 187 on the Undercover Cop. So they sent me to Phoenix, Arizona. Deep Cover. Huh? Deep Cover. The name of the song. Yeah. yeah. So. And I saw that on TV. I said, damn, Harry O was right, this music business. And then I called my man King T up. And I said, man, I'm looking for an artist. And he told me, he said, uh, man, these kids are staying with your cousin right now. It was alcoholics. Uh, my boy Fade, who was working over at Lyle Records, was going to run my label. So the alcoholics were your group? It was supposed to be my group. So I. I mess up. One of my partners go to the hole. So he called me. I'm going across the yard eating my little ice cream. He called me from the hole. Rick, man, I need you to call my girl. So I walk over to the hole. What's the phone number? And get the phone number. Me and my concert had already been into it because I told him I wasn't washing no windows and I wasn't raking no rocks. So he said, oh, you out of bounds. Threw me in the hole. While we negotiating the contract, we finna get the contract signed and everything. When I get out the hole, I call Fade. He said, I got good news for you. What's the good news? I signed the Alcoholics to Loud Records. That was your group? Puts me my label, my, my, the group to start my label off. Right, but at that point you were already in jail. Yeah, I was in jail when I did it, yeah. Okay. But I still had a little bread, you know. Okay. That was, all the bread wasn't gone then. Right. And I had all the connections, you know. I knew Dick Griffey, Otis Smith, Barry Gordy. The Ghetto Bible, that's what all the dudes on the street is calling it, the Ghetto Bible. If you ain't got one on best seller on Amazon, uh, Kindle, Nook, check me out. I'm gonna sell a million copies independently. I own this, all mine. Uh, I know Jaden a little bit. You know, we run into each other in Calabasas. That's cute. Uh, he can date all the he, white girls. He was wearing girls, a dress last time. Last time I seen him. Too. Yeah, he's wearing a dress last time I seen him. Okay. Does uh, he wear does he come down to Crenshaw with one on? I don't think he goes to Crenshaw, period. I don't think I, oh he might slip down there, but he ain't got no goddamn skirt on when he comes down there, I bet you that. Speak up for the black community on the main stage. Cause she don't gotta do that. Beyonce's rich. Beyonce is not black or white, she's Beyonce. <laughs> Alright? She's not man or woman. She's Beyonce. She's reached that level like Oprah. Like Oprah's just an entity. 
that's what Beyonce is. So Beyonce don't have to speak up for us. 